Hey, what is up, everyone? All right, what's up? Hey, you fuckers. <laughs> I didn't have a, oh, I didn't uh, start off my, I didn't open up like I normally do. But uh, yeah, it took me a while to get to this. I didn't, I didn't realize it was three weeks. Sometimes, uh, a lot of times, I lose track of time. And this is one of those occasions. And I'm, I'm also a big fucking procrastinator. I, I say I'm going to do something and I never do it for whatever reason. Or it takes me forever. So this is meant to be like a week, a week long wait. But three weeks later, here we are. So we're going to do some of these questions. I got a few from uh, my Facebook group and from the channel. So we're going to see you hear me clicking around or any kind of sounds. I'm looking back and forth at the questions. So first one we're going to do is we're going to start off with JP because it's a, a joke question. But I can answer it seriously because I'm good like that. <laughs> uh, JP, don't know JP. <clears throat> He's here on YouTube, Double Shot J, a movie reviewer, horror reviewer, and one third of the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror crew. The horror podcast made up of fans and just, you know, lovers of horror movies. He asks, <laughs> why is JP underrated? Misspells underrated, but we're going to let that one go. JP is underrated because he makes a lot of good points. He says a lot of silly shit, but he makes a lot of good points and isn't always uh, quoted for doing so. He, he's not really made strides. For example, um, my channel is slightly bigger than his. I may have videos that, you know, dwarf his <laughs> his biggest video. But at the same time, he gets consistent um, traffic with his stuff. That's his channel. Now, when it comes to the podcast itself, 22 Shots of Moods and Horror, he is really good. He, he makes points that you're not going to hear from maybe not Moods or Jeremy or maybe from any of the other people and when he does it's kind of an eye opener to me personally but hearing people kind of react to him it's like yeah he says really funny things now, he's said some, some things uh that are actually pretty hilarious that aren't uh <laughs> that weren't meant to be funny not exactly unintentionally funny you could say like he was talking about zombie zombie 2 you know the full chief him he he makes a comment about the main zombie and the bad worm placement that's funny shit but when he actually makes actual points on horror films, you don't hear it a lot of times because he's not uh, Jeremy. He doesn't have the the film school background to analyze and and look into why this thing is happening in this movie at this time. He doesn't have the following that Moods has, the um, the popularity when it comes to movie reviews. Because for a long time, Moods did. A ton of reviews and he did them weekly he did a lot of uh, themed weeks and stuff like that so he was he was setting his um, he was creating his niche in the community right there and he had branched off and become friends with other people within the YouTube horror community and JP kind of followed suit and it's kind of unfortunate because JP is just a good, just as good a reviewer as Moods. He just doesn't have the popularity as Moods. So JP's underrated in that way. Let's see, we're gonna get some of these other ones on here. Jonathan Wilhelm, 
what got you into horror? What are some of your favorite horror movies? What got me into horror is something I've tried to think of because I, I haven't been able to pinpoint an exact time period when I started loving horror. I can't even remember the first horror movie I saw. I can kind of think and assume what was, but I'm... I don't think I'll ever really be sure unless I kind of <laughs> dig deep and then do some meditation or some shit. But what got me into horror? I mean, I was afraid of horror movies. I think I said all this stuff in my episode zero of my podcast. But I was afraid of horror movies when I was a little kid, <laughs> like around five, six, something like that. But I liked Godzilla films. I liked watching killer animal films it's not like i like watching them when they were on i would watch them um stuff like like uh, i can't remember what the name would be it was like killer b or killer like the killer b nightmare or something like that this killer animal insect movie that would play uh rattled or silent predators these these films that would play on usa and stuff like that, but I liked watching those, I liked watching um, the old Universal monster movies, I'd seen Dracula when I was a kid, I'd seen Creature from the Black Lagoon, I'd seen The Mummy, and specifically The Creature, because I liked the suit, I liked that it looked like something I wanted to do, I wanted to be in a suit, in like a pool or something somewhere with grass around, in an outfit like that. So just, I think, the the creatures, the monsters, the characters themselves is what really got me into horror. <clears throat> I love Jason. I love the fact it was a hockey mask was the thing. You know, it, you couldn't see eyes. You couldn't make out features. But it was this, this uh, blank face, this, this hockey mask, this inhuman type thing going on. I really dug that. As far as some of my favorite horror movies, man, I can't. I have a whole action being an entire video itself. <laughs> John Carpenter's The Thing is my favorite. It's my number one. I love The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I love Jaws, uh, Dawn of the Dead, the originals, um, the Blob remake, the Fly remake. Uh, something one of these questions I'm gonna get into later uh, Street Trash one of those movies that just <laughs> it was like one of the biggest surprises I've ever seen out of a horror movie um, the, the Creature from the Black Lagoon I like all three of those movies but I like the first one I like Aquatic horror because I like creature features and I like killer animal films so I like Creature from the Black Lagoon The Gill Man is my favorite universal monster I like um I'm a I'm a big fan of I was always a big fan of practical effects but I'm a fan of um creatures and, and monsters themselves if it sounds a little weird uh it was a cut there I was making sure this thing was recording I don't want to be talking for eight something minutes and <laughs> just not have it record. So that's why it sounds might sound a little awkward. Uh, Mosquito from the '90s, Gunnar Hansen. I always say that's my favorite '90s horror mo- uh, horror movie. I just love everything about that movie. I, there's a lot of people who think it's silly. There's a lot of people who think it's bad. I have a favorite type of horror movie for each decade none of them are always or none of them are ever the same <clears throat> I, f- the second one is kind of it's like really closing in just because I've been watching it more it's my most watched horror movie in the last couple of years and that was The Silence of the Lambs I have that Criterion Blu-ray and I just I couldn't stop watching it I don't know why Some I just I love that movie I love the characters in it each one of them are unique and special in their own way Hannibal Lecter is a great villain Buffalo Bill is a interesting villain um, 
Cleary Starling is a great fucking hero. And I love that movie. I Saw the Devil. Great fucking horror movie. Probably my favorite foreign horror film. I'm just looking around now. Uh, it's like my favorites. Oops. <laughs> Somehow we lost the questions. Uh, I have this in their habit before. I don't know what the fuck that's about. Here we go. Never seen that happen before. Um, <laughs> the Terminator, I know a lot of people don't think that's a horror film. It's an action film, sci-fi, whatever. I consider the first Terminator a horror film. And I think a lot of people do that, but they do it a lot with films that maybe are even less horror than that. But I, I throw it in there. I just, you know, a fucking cyborg going around killing people, slasher, not slasher style, but just picking people off one by one, and, you know, they're, it's after someone specific, but still, and the fucking thing's scary. Alligator, I love Alligator from, I, I just uh, recently saw that someone was selling Alligator 2, it might be a, um, not, it's a bootleg, but it's not like a, uh, one of those weird European bootleg type things, and I like that one too, there's a lot of people who don't like that movie, a lot of people who don't, people are fucking weird, I don't know, man, I, I could go off on horror films, and I have, I just gotta upload those, uh, <laughs> I gotta upload those audio clips, but, yeah, horror fans annoy the piss out of me. In general, there's a lot of people I like in the horror community, but, you know. <laughs> but it's just, in general, they fucking annoy me. Yeah, I, I love Jonathan. No, I, don't, I don't love you, Jonathan Wilhelm, you piece of shit. I'm kidding. I love horror movies, Jonathan, and uh, I appreciate the questions. It, it helped out. Uh, completely missed Marco's question, even though it's not related to anything. Why don't you admit that Fedor was on roids, steroids? And if you're not familiar who that who, who that is, Fedor Emelianenko, the former Pride FC champion, legend in the sport of mixed martial arts. He's one of my all-time favorite fighters. Uh, debate on whether or not he was on steroids. I don't. I don't think he was. The fucking guy just looked like a a thick Russian dude. You know, you look early on, he just looked like a a, a a thick Russian dude, you know. But he just, I think there are just some fighters who are special. You see it in Anderson Silva, you saw it in GSP, John Jones. Um, even a guy that, you know, is familiar with Fedor, Igor Vovchanchin. A lot of people don't know who that is. But he was a, a phenom for a while, a really great fighter in a time when there weren't a lot of great fighters. And some guys just changed the game. Mark Coleman was the guy who pretty much invented ground and pound. He, uh, he specialized in that fighting style and wrestling and you know taking someone down and, and fucking punching their face, sometimes even headbutting. And then you take that and give it to Fedor and all of a sudden now he's he's uh changed ground and pound and he's the only one to do it that way. There's a lot of guys who can try to be like other fighters but fighters but they're not like other fighters. Fedor had a way of um just doing his ground and pound his way, either standing in the guard, being in the guard and being you know, the guard for Fedor is like being in mount. You're going to get fucking sledgehammers on your head. But I won't admit Fedor was on steroids because there was never any proof. He's never came out and said it. And guys will come out and say all the time, yeah, I did steroids. Yeah, he looked different later on, but he's also wasn't 
some crazy, you know, peak level athlete either. He was always relying on his uh, fighting, his not his fighting, his uh, natural ability to fight. So it wasn't like he was on steroids, Marco Virtanen. Let's take a question from the. You know what Killersaurus commented? I didn't even see this. I never saw this, so we're gonna react to that. Killer Worm. He says, I like your choice of music. Thank you. And now he has the the Rust Thorn Summer Party Massacre from that movie, and I used the theme song from that movie, so that's pretty cool. He says, What's your favorite horror movie series? And what's your favorite horror movie so far in 2020? <clears throat> My favorite horror movie series, I, I'm assuming franchise, but if you mean horror series, I'll just answer both. I'll answer it both ways. As far as like horror franchises, Friday the 13th is my favorite horror franchise. I don't dislike any movies in that franchise. I grew up with those movies. Jason is my favorite horror movie character. I loved Friday the 13th and the, all the movies that encompass it. Yep. As far as like TV series... The Twilight Zone. I'd probably say The Twilight Zone. I am a big fan of The Twilight Zone. I, I that's another thing I grew up with. I've, I'm still seeing. I haven't seen the entire <clears throat> series as a whole because uh, a couple of years ago I was um, out of town and I was watching. We were watching Twilight Zone and I was. We were watching an episode that I had never seen before. It's kind of funny when. You're such a big fan of something, but, you know, you haven't seen everything. It's kind of cool. My favorite horror movie so far in 2020. Let's, hold on, let's check something real quick, because I know I look some stuff up. I want to make sure it's 2020 and not last year. Boom, boom. This is very uh, entertaining. The most entertaining part of the show. Or the <laughs> video. <clears throat> hmm. You know what? I don't know. My favorite horror movie last year was ready or not this year I can't say Tiger King <laughs> I fucking I was balls deep into the entire Tiger King thing hmm it's definitely not Black Christmas that movie sucked Brahms the boy 2 was generic as hell I liked the first the boy movie but it was just, it was a, it was a different twist to the killer doll subgenre. It was different, and I like that kind of different. But the fucking sequel comes out, and it just kind of didn't ruin the first movie. But it ruins the the lore of it. The not the lore. The uh, it's not as good. Fuck it. I don't know, man. If I, could, I have to pick one, I... That's fucking difficult. Because... It's not a horror movie. The Trials of Gabriel Fernandez. Another movie that I... Another docuseries that I've... For a different reason that I talked about a lot. You know, Tiger King was entertaining in a very... Um, car crash type of way messy funny at times a lot of memes about it and then the trials of Gabriel Fernandez were just completely fucking emotional I I had actually I had to turn off my I had to turn it off at one point and go to sleep and, lay, and I got up the next morning and finished it but that is a a rough watch and I talked about it briefly on my Facebook 
if you're a parent, that has to fuck with you. And I am, I am not a parent. I have, uh, <laughs> I was, I was close to a, a little girl and it would, I, I couldn't, I can't see anything ever like that happening to her without feeling any kind of, uh, emotion about it because it's just it's horrible what this little kid went through and uh, my friend was telling me because you, you learn about the mom and the boyfriend who did all these horrible things to him and they're talking about the autopsy report and he's going he's going in about how there was nothing in his stomach except for this stuff this uh these granules type of things and he said they, they ran a test on it and it was cat litter. So they were making him eat cat litter. And now while I'm watching this, my friend messages me and said, yeah, he he made his mom a homemade Valentine's card. And it, it fucking broke me because I had a very strong relationship with my mom. And all this stuff, you know, going through my head, you know, watching this stuff at the same time really got to me really bad. And I had to turn the fucking thing off and <laughs> never had to do that before and finish it in the morning. So if I, maybe it's not a horror movie. I'm not going to put that on the list, but I guess that is probably my favorite thing so far this year. And it's my favorite in a way that it it's hard to describe, man, because it's not like my favorite because I liked it so much. It was it was rough, but it brought out all this emotion. I would probably say The Hunt. Uh, I watch, I haven't watched a whole lot of 2020 horror films. But The Hunt might be my favorite. Uh, human hunting subgenre. I, I'm a fan of it. I like Battle Royale. Hard Target. Surviving the Game. I haven't seen... I think I have seen Hunger Games, but I don't remember it. Pretty sure I've seen it. Oh. Um... And I'm just, I'm, I like that subgenre. But that might be my favorite, yeah. I have to watch some more. I I might have watched, what's this other one on here? I don't know if the platform is 2020. I was talking, I was saying a lot of good things about the platform. Um, I, I thought the platform was great until the ending and then it lost me. And it's not that it lost me because I couldn't fucking figure it out. I, I understood the ending. It just doesn't fit. Cinematically, I get it. But at the same time, when you're looking at it and the whole thing isn't... Um, it's metaphorical, but it's not out of that realm of reality. So it's just... I don't know. I like the platform a lot until the ending. <laughs> that hurt the end. That hurt the movie for me overall, but I still like it. I just say, hey, you know, that movie's awesome. Just a shitty ending. <laughs> All right, let's go to. Oh, let's get over here. Bryce Coaster. Bryce Coaster asks, what's your favorite 80s VHS cover art? Oh man. My favorite wow well, movie that I just mentioned, Street Trash. Street Trash has great fucking artwork. I don't know if it's cover art, VHS cover art or actual poster art, but that the dude melting in the toilet is, is great. Um Jason Lives, Friday the thirteenth, part six. That's a very um, basic poster, but I like it. I like the the hockey mask with the the headstone. I I like that a lot. Stand on the same thing. Friday Thirteenth Part Four, the final chapter. 
Jason Takes Manhattan, another one. Just I love the hockey mask, man. You, I, if you're not, if you can't tell that I'm a big fan of that character, then I don't know what to tell you. But <laughs> just a lot of those are really they look good. They appeal to me. The original Nightmare on Elm Street poster looks great too. Our cover art. I, I guess it would be a poster. I guess it would be both. Fuck it. Um. trying to think what exactly uh fucking poster art or cover art VHS cover art I think media may have put out a Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh VHS cover out in the 80s I think I'm not completely sure and I think I ripped that off because I, <laughs> I, when I was a kid I owned the Texas Chainsaw Massacre on tape but there was no cover for it but I liked it so much and I wanted to do something so I took a a blank case tape or a blank tape case little slip thing and I made my own artwork for it. And I had Leatherface in the foreground. I had eyes in the background. I had blood. And I had hooks. So it looks like that. I had seen that recently. And I'm like, well, maybe I got that. And subconsciously ripped it off. But I wasn't trying to. John Carpenter's The Thing is a really great looking piece of artwork. I recently heard... I read an article about how that was made. That was pretty cool. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Uh, another really cool looking piece of art. Uh, it has a clown hand and the finger and it's twisting the, the earth on its the tip of its finger like a basketball. That's a really good one too. Um, there's some of them that just look good. Sweet 16, I think, has a, it's another basic kind of design, a basic piece of artwork, but I, I like the way that looks, too. Mm. This is where, uh, my mind goes blank trying to think of all the fucking movies I've seen over the years. <laughs> Arachnid. I don't know if you guys know about Arachnid, but killer spider movie, giant killer spider movie. Really crazy artwork on that. Like legs coming out of all this, this light and everything. Really neat looking cover art. Well, let's try and think of one more good one before I move on. Shit, man, this is hard. Eighties VHS cover art, and I have like so many in my head. It's kind of hard to guess. Pinpoint one. Okay, one that I mentioned, alligator. That's a simple, simple design for that. Just an alligator in a sewer. But it looks fucking great. Uh, the howling. Uh, the the claws, the claw marks, and the face screaming through that. That's pretty cool too. I've always liked that one. Now that actually might be my favorite. That street trash. The video dead has good cover art too. That's a neat one. You guys have never seen the video dead? That's really good too. All right, let's let's move on. This, is, <laughs> this thing's running what twenty minutes? Oh shit! All right, this one's from James D. Calx. I still don't know if that's Calx, Cox, or Cox. I'm pretty sure he said it too. I just don't remember. You thought about moving into podcasting or are you happy and comfortable staying on YouTube? I have actually had a podcast at one point and then through 
seeing why or seeing how that's gonna the site I was using was I already forgot what it is what the fucking the rappers those uh, shitty rappers they all use it what's that thing called uh ah fuck what are those uh <laughs> that fucking site it's like all those uh those dumb rappers came from there we're gonna look this up cause you can still find episodes on there and then once I realized what they were how they did things they uh they hide your older episodes and you have to upgrade He's like, I don't want to fucking do that. I just want to upload my podcast somewhere. And that's why I got out of it. Let's see. <laughs> what is this fucking site called? It's kind of crazy. I haven't thought about this, the name of this thing until now. Was it SoundCloud? Yeah, okay, SoundCloud. Okay, SoundCloud is where I had my podcast. And if you wanted to upload more stuff, you had to actually pay money. And I was like, fuck that. (laughs) I'm not fucking paying money. I just want to talk about movies, you fucks. But no, I've uh, branched out into podcasting. And as far as YouTube, I, I'm still trying to do stuff on YouTube, man. I'm always trying to do new things and not exactly new, but just trying to get content out there. Can I show my collection? I'll answer that in the comments. Yeah, James is good people. Okay, this one's from Christina. She says... Even though they are all over the... uh, Let me start over. Even though they are overall ridiculous, what two creature feature characters would you put together in a battle and what would your outcome be? Mm. See, now... I didn't put a whole lot of thought into this because I... I I was like, ah, it's going to be an easy answer. Now that I'm thinking about it, it's like, yeah, you're going to have a bunch of... If I want to do something like that, I want it to be decent. I'm always trying to do stuff with these characters and pit them against each other and come out with realistic outcomes and finishes. I don't want to end up like a mega shark versus shark the pusses or something. <laughs> whale wolf. Super croc versus whale wolf. Creature feature characters. Mm. So, like, my first thought was the thing versus the blob, but then that would be like, eh. It's like one of them's going to just assimilate or they're going to melt the other, so it's not really. That wouldn't be too good. I've probably thought about something like this before in the past. It's just. Trying to think of it now. Hmm. What two creature feature characters would I put together in a battle? That's actually another hard question. Because I have a bunch of monsters in my head.
I think maybe maybe take the Leviathan monster. I don't think there's ever really. I've always called it Leviathan, even though that's not the name of the the monster. I guess you could call it that. The Leviathan creature from Leviathan. And pit it against. This is like a thing for Schizophrenic. I had to give him some. Some creature feature matchups. And I'm going to get to his question too. Because he asked one. I don't even, I'm having like super brain farts now. Hmm. I'm trying to think of water creatures that would fit the, the matchup well. All right, let's do this. Let's say the Leviathan creature versus the flying fish from Piranha 2. But at one point, uh, they team up and, and start taking people out. Or let's say uh, the Leviathan creature versus a humanoid from the deep. Yeah, that'd be cool. Those killer salmon type creatures that just want to <laughs> impregnate women. Let's, all right, I'm going to do two, and I'm going to cross over three. The Flying Fish from Piranha 2, Humanoids from the Deep Monsters, and the Leviathan Monster. And I would have... I would have... I don't know. I don't want any of them to win. I want them to all, like, lose. <laughs> Okay, how about the humanoid, like, uh, attacks the leviathan creature, and they produce, like, this baby later on, and that thing wins, and it, it can communicate with the flying fish, and they take over a town. <laughs> I just made up a, a movie and a sequel. I just sequel baited. Right, she has another question. She says, have you ever, even in childhood legitimately been scared grossed out or traumatized by a horror movie i've been grossed out i saw i've told this story before i was a little kid i was wasn't feeling good already and i had eaten spaghetti i had like a full belly of spaghetti and we were sitting down and i was watching dead alive aka brain dead on tv and I'm watching this thing, and it's that movie's fucking disgusting. And there's a there's a part where they kill a rat, and it bites this woman. And there's a, the part that got me was when they're eating, and this woman's fucking blood, like a pimple, busts into a pudding, like the custard they're eating, and an ear falls off, and they eat it, and it fucking grossed me out. And I started puking everywhere, and I was at my aunt's house, and. They covered me up because I wasn't feeling well because of that shit. And I threw up all over her new kids on the block blanket. <laughs> she was all pissed about it. <laughs> so yeah, that grossed me out. As far as like traumatized, I've never been traumatized by a horror movie. But scared, yes. I got scared a bunch of times as a kid early on when I was watching horror movies. But funny enough, the one thing that scared me worse than anything else was the fucking Crypt Keeper. And it got me on two occasions, this motherfucker. Uh, once out at a... With my cousin at someone else's house and here at my house. Uh, 
you know, when he busts out and he starts laughing, it fucking scared me both times. I yelled for my cousin. I yelled for my mom. And yeah, it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> so as far as that goes, no. Uh, I used to be able to eat all the time. I used to watch horror movies and eat all the time. But now, for some reason, I can't tell you why. If I, I watch a horror movie and something weird or gross is happening, I'll lose my appetite. And one of my biggest pet peeves is something that makes me lose my appetite. I hate losing my appetite. So, yeah, I, I, so I guess I am grossed out still by horror movies. Just not to uh, an extreme extent. I just get fucking angry that I, I don't feel like eating when I wanted to eat. <laughs> I think that was it for the... Oh, we got... Oh, okay, James got your first question. Sorry about that. He says, what's your beef with Italian cinema? <laughs> so this is a, an ongoing joke. I'll let everyone in on it. Uh, I don't hate Italian cinema. I think a lot of it's overrated. Um, Jalos in particular are fucking overrated. Uh, the plots are fucking. When your writing is bad, I don't care how good your movie looks. It's gonna fucking annoy me. I don't like that. I can deal with plot holes here and there, but the fucking fact that it's all formulaic, it's always bad. When you can see shit happening. And you're like, okay, it's not going to be this, this, and this. It's going to be point A, point B to point C. And I watched a bunch of Italian films, a bunch of uh, giallos, actually. I don't hate all Italian horror, Italian cinema. Actually, I'll point that out. Italian cinema, I don't have a problem with Italian cinema in general. One of my all-time favorite movies is Once Upon a Time in the West. That's a spaghetti western. I also love the entire Dollars Trilogy, which are spaghetti. I enjoy spaghetti westerns as a whole. Um, Sergio Leone is one of my favorite directors. Dario Argento, I don't have a problem with him as a human being. (laughs) You know, I like Phenomena. Uh, Fulci, I like Zombie. I like these movies by these guys. I like... uh, Demons and Demons 2. I like Cannibal Holocaust. I like Black, the Black Cat. So it's not I don't have a beef with Italian cinema. It's just there are some things I, I, I think are pretty overrated. And one of those things, one of those films, is Suspiria. I don't get how that's so many people's favorite horror movie. I don't see how it's one of the all-time greats. I don't get that shit. I don't get the love for it. I I don't fucking get it. Sorry. (laughs) But yeah, Suspiria to me is like, in my opinion, the most overrated horror movie of all time. Yeah, it has good music. It looks pretty. And that's where it ends. I like the atmosphere. I should say that too. Okay, we got... Two more questions left, and that's going to be good because I am running long on this motherfucker. And let's do Killer Sauruses because I didn't even see yours, bro, and I'm sorry about that. He says, he has a few questions here. What is your favorite non-horror movie series? And I have gone back back and forth on that a lot over the years because I love the Dirty Harry films. But I also love the Death Wish films. John Wick. I still haven't, I still haven't seen John Wick 3. But I'm, I'm digging those two films. The first two. I'm going to have to do a quick Google search. Because I don't want to have to think like I was. Because I have all the stuff in my head. I just can't get it out. I should say, I like the, um, recently, as far as, like, recent stuff, I like the Ip Man movies. All four of those movies are good. Um, people love Back to the Future. I like the Back to the Future films. Let's see. 
I was saying about the Back to the Future. I'm not like a huge, huge fan of it though. Harry Potter, I was never into Harry Potter. Star Wars, I like. I like them okay, but I want to see the originals again without the uh, CGI stuff. I I want to get the uh, the specialized versions before I watch all of them, like total, because I haven't seen the new ones. Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. I thought the Lord of the Rings films were okay. I haven't seen the Hobbit movies. Was actually going to watch those um, about a week ago. Before I change my mind. The Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm a big fan of those films. I always liked. Uh, ever since the first. Like ever since Iron Man. I liked all those movies I've seen. I still haven't seen Black Panther. I still haven't seen Captain Marvel. I still haven't seen Ant-Man and Wasp. Endgame. So. Homecoming 2. I still haven't seen some of them but. <laughs> <laughs> fuck uh, Fast and the Furious that's uh, to me I, I like some of them but personally I think they've run its course run their course the Batman films I like all the Batman films I, I, I'm i not the biggest fan of all of them but I do like as far as like uh, stuff from the 90s the 89 Batman, the Dark Knight Trilogy. Yeah, I like all of them. Planet of the Apes, I should probably say that too. I didn't even think about that. This is how my brain thinks. I have all this shit in my head. And then it's like, oh yeah, Planet of the Apes, one of your all-time favorite movies. And it's it's films. That could be up there. Because I, I love the Planet of the Apes films. I have an entire... I, if you guys haven't seen it, I have a collection video of my Planet of the Apes stuff. I talk about my... I show my movies and my comic books the Terminator well the Terminator I, I consider that first one horror but I guess overall it's not horror that franchise is rough because I love the first two movies what was I just looking at Rambo I seen the first four Rambos I really like the first four Rambos still haven't seen part five but yeah A big fan of those. I don't know my, my favorite, my favorite non-horror movie series. It might be Dirty Harry. Planet of the Apes, Dirty Harry, Death Wish. It's somewhere around there. I mean, I I love the first Planet of the Apes, but. <laughs> Damn, man. I don't know. Because I'm starting to think of it now. I like the second one. I like Beneath. I like Conquest. Battle, I've grown to like more, even though it's like not my favorite. I even like the Tim Burton one, even though it has a shitty fucking ending to that, too. I like that it was the last one to use prosthetics and makeup. And the new trilogy, the reboot trilogy, I fucking love those movies. Dawn is like right up there, like my number two as far as my favorite in order. I'll say Planet of the Apes. That's my favorite. Yeah. What is my favorite video game? <laughs> Damn it. <man. laughs> oh, my favorite video game. That's a rough one. It's like, do I. Do I say the ones that were fun but didn't really have, like, uh, oh, man. So here's the problem with that. There's Killzone for the PS2. I love Killzone. But I love the multiplayer. The the single-player campaign is okay, but I love the multiplayer. I was a fucking madman on multiplayer. I got very good at that game uh, um, on uh, multiplayer. <laughs> um, but I also love the Mario games, like from Super Nintendo Mario. I don't I haven't played anything past that. I mean, I played 
new Super Mario Brothers for the DS. But as far as like anything past that, I haven't. I mean, I played the 64, Super Mario World 64. But I played the hell out of Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2, 3, the Lost Levels. I played a bunch of the the wrestling games, the SmackDown vs. Raw games. Shut your mouth. Just just bring it. Uh, the 64 games on those, the No Mercy, WrestleMania 2000, WCW vs. NWO World Tour. As far as like my favorite, oh, that's rough. That's a hard question, man. I don't know. Yeah, cause I'm now I'm looking at my stuff. I'm a big Street Fighter fan. I'm a big fighting game player. Uh, I played a bunch of those back in the day. I just, but I also like beat 'em ups. <laughs> I like Turtles in Time. Turtles in Time could be like right up there as one of my favorites. Fuck, man. I don't know because I played the Street Fighter games. So many of them on the, well, I don't Street Fighter, just fighting games in general on Super Nintendo, from like the Street Fighter Two different variations, Turbo and Super Street Fighter Two Turbo, um, Clay Fighter, Art of Fighting, Fatal Fury, Fatal Fury One Two Three and Special. I got the Alpha Anthology for the PS2. That was uh, really fun too. I like Street Fighter Three Third Strike. I, I don't know, man. I I, don't, I can't pick a favorite. That's that's really hard. My favorite video game. I I like a lot of those I mentioned though. My favorite TV show. <clears throat> My favorite TV show might be. It's a probably a sitcom. It would be either Married with Children or. Three's Company. I just those movies, uh, those shows really made me laugh when I needed to laugh. And when I was in a really bad place, I I watched those things and I always felt good. So it's between Married with Children and Three's Company. My favorite actor. That's another hard one. Because it's like, what do I? What am I looking for? Am I looking for someone who I like as an actor, as a person? Am I looking at their filmography? Am I looking at it as a whole? Because then I have to kind of take in consideration consideration that they don't have like the best <laughs> filmography. They have a few films that I like. Like Van Damme was my favorite action star. But if I had to pick one actor's filmography to watch for the rest of my life, it would be Schwarzenegger. Just because there's so many of different things that he did that was awesome. But I think, in my opinion, like the best actor ever is Daniel Day Lewis. But again, I'd rather have Schwarzenegger's filmography to watch. I like There Will Be Blood. I like Gangs of New York. Um, it's just, I don't know. My favorite actor. Hell, that's just, that's hard. Yeah, that was I, <laughs> that was rough. My favorite horror actor is Kane Hodder. So it's not like a direct answer to your question. Sorry about that, man. But like favorite action star is Jean Claude Van Damme. Favorite horror uh, actor is Kane Hodder. My favorite overall filmography at for an actor is um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So <laughs> yeah, that's what we got for that. <clears throat> And last but not least is Schizophrenic. What is the most psychologically traumatizing horror film or moment from a horror film that you have ever seen and why? I think I answered uh, for Christina. I, I've never really been traumatized. But moments that are kind of, that really fuck with you. Damn, 
in horror movies. Let me think. That okay, so I'll, I'll pick some moments because I can't really pinpoint anything like that. There, I I can say there are some moments that are like really fucking creepy and really legitimately creep me out. Uh, Black Christmas, the original Black Christmas, when Billy's on the phone and he's going off and he's going crazy wild, he's saying all these crazy shit. Uh, there's a point where it kind of goes silent. There's a beat, and then you hear him go. I'm going to kill you. Very calmly. Very, uh, not like what he was just seconds ago. That was, you know, creepy. And a similar thing, not exactly similar, but you'll see what I mean when I say it. Uh, The Hills Run Red, a movie from the, a horror movie from the 2000s. There's a scene with the babyface killer. And a girl is, she's singing this song and you know, throughout the movie, he's kind of shown to be this kind of leather face type character, not very bright, not very, and this is a spoiler, sorry, but he seems like animalistic almost, just subservient to his father, and then, you know, because this character is, he's had his wire, his jaw wired open and, and held together with this mask and the way he is so he's he's fucked up physically so she's singing and she's humming she's crying her eyes are watering her nose is running and she's singing this song trying to get him to kind of you've seen it in movies trying to get the uh win the killer over in some way so she can hopefully get out of that situation she's singing and then you hear him talk and he just goes you can keep singing if it makes you feel better like a normal person and it's so fucking freaky when you first hear it because I'll be uh, it, you wouldn't you don't expect that at all that's like uh and I would talk about that too and I was like man that that is just <laughs> it's a it's a really genuinely creepy moment as far as traumatizing I can't think of Oh, a moment from a horror film. Let's see. Other than that, psychologically. Because that did mess with me when I first heard it. All right, one of my favorite horror movies. My favorite horror horror movie from the 2000s. Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. And you'll see a little bit of theme here with these three movies that I've mentioned. Um... Throughout the movie, you hear Leslie talk, and he's he's going off. He seems like a really funny, quirky guy, you know, not really threatening. And then you see a different side of him. He goes up, and, you know, he wants to know what the fuck's going on. It gets really serious really quick. That is a, a great moment in a horror movie because you feel you can it's a fucking it's introduction to danger you know he said all this shit now it's real you know you you realize this guy isn't fucking around he wants to do all this shit he's talking about and he's gonna do it you know you do see him later they realize what they're in for but that moment before any of that happened before the first kill that is like a crazy moment as that is Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. If you've never seen it, go check that out. That's one of my all-time favorite movies. Uh, my favorite horror film from the 2000s. The entire decade, that's my number one. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, that's it. We did pretty good. I think almost an hour. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't expecting that, but whatever. This was fun. If, if I had more questions, then I would answer them, but it's probably good I didn't because I would have gone longer. Uh, thank you for everyone who asked some questions. It was helpful. Really, uh, really appreciate you guys. Uh, I apologize if I wasn't able to answer your questions as, you know, the way you, you wanted, but I, I tried my best. Maybe we'll do another one of these in the future.
maybe I'll do a, a live stream too. So until then, oh, I'll show you a little bit of a thing coming up. Something I've been planning for a long time. My favorite villains. And it's going to be my top 13 favorite villains. Not overall characters, but villains, the bad guys, antagonists. My favorite villains from each decade, from each year, actually. Starting with 1974. And we're going to go all the way up to 2020, 2021, whenever we get finished with it. So that's something that you can look forward to. Top 13 villains of 1974. I, I've been playing this shit for a long time. It was going to be... It was going to start in 1932, and I just, like... <sighs> that's a lot of fucking <laughs> researching and planning. So... Once I get it going, hopefully I'll be able to get a video out once a week. And have some content out for you guys some cool cool shit <laughs> so, until that's what you gotta look, look forward to but uh, i'll see you guys soon hopefully not too much longer i won't try <laughs> three weeks three week wait this time later